am so stoked to have my next guest join us. Their brand new album, Imposter Syndrome, is out right now. It's the guys of AG Club. Yeah. Jody, baby boy. Hey. Thanks for your time, guys. Of course. Thank you for having this us. This is an exciting time. We are doing this the day of the album release party in Oakland. How does that feel right now? It's amazing. It's so good to be able to come back home and do this. Especially doing this in Oakland, where there's so much history, New Parish especially, where so many iconic acts got their start here. Who are some of the artists you've seen here or associate New Parish with in Oakland in general? Um, I mean, just recently, I know La Russell performed at the New Parish, and I'm really a big fan of everything that he's doing. So that's really cool that we could come after him. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, this is just a legendary place. So many people have been here. Um, it's really cool. What is it about the East Bay sound, especially in hip hop, that resonates and that has continued to have that influence and legacy? It's the grooves and I think the the wisdom in the lyrics. Like there's just a different level of player out here. Like there's a different level of game. And so I think that's something that people gravitate to a lot when it comes to like just West Coast Bay Area, like music in general, is just the the wordplay and the the silver tongue that these artists have. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like that's a really big part of it. Yeah, and your influences aren't just strictly hip hop either. You guys got a wide range of music. Yeah. Any R and B acts from the Bay, and any local artists and and so forth that might have resonated with you? Uh, Tower of Power, yeah. Keisha, yeah. Cole. Oh sure. yeah, yeah, love yeah. her. It's so awesome to hear that Tower Power is still an influence <laughs> on young people and young acts because they've been around for, what, 40, 50 years or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> like our parents, grandparents listen to that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it about Tower Power that resonated with you? Oh, my gosh. So the first time I heard Tower Power was actually my, my ex's dad was playing a vinyl of their, of their um, I don't remember which one it was, but I heard uh, What Is Hip, and I was just dancing all over the crib, and it's just like... I always come back to that. I always want to be able to just, you know, carry that energy with the stuff that we do. And just, yeah. Now with this album, Poster Syndrome, just the name, the title alone is very telling. And it's a lot different in subject matter than F Your Expectations. Yeah. yeah. What was the light bulb moment, so to speak, on going in this direction and revealing some of your inner thoughts and vulnerabilities because on the last album, you didn't care about people. Yeah. <laughs> now you do. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's every single album is just like a stamp uh, on the timeline. You know, there was halfway off the porch when we were trying to jump off the porch and start our, you know, our life. And then after expectations, when we started to get a little bit of notice. And so we were like, hey, let us do our thing. You know what I mean? And imposter syndrome came when, you know, we got to do our thing and we reached this point where we felt like we were kind of getting pigeonholed, you know what I mean? Just because of the type of songs that we were starting to be known for, you know? But, uh, yeah, you go into the studio and you're trying to recreate that moment, you know, because that's what people want, you think, you know? And um, it's like no matter how much you try to say F your expectations, like at some point sometimes it might get to you. And um, so, yeah, we went through a... Uh, a cool period that we were just, you know, kind of blocked and that imposter syndrome sank in where it was just like, geez, like if we continue to do what we want to do, is there going to be a point where people are like, wait a minute, like, I thought you guys were this and that's why I loved you so much, but you're this and I don't, you know what I mean? Um, and so I think that this album kind of is just us showing how we overcame that and just that process, you know what I mean? Were there extenuating circumstances internally that led you guys to, to go down this path? Because I can imagine that you talk, right? And, yeah. And, and you played a big festival, like, wow, look at that crowd. And there's pressure. Everyone handles pressure in different ways. Oh, it's, it's just every day. I feel like imposter syndrome is like, it's every day, dude. Like, sometimes being in a space with, like, so many creatives, like, it feels like, how did I even get here? Like, one day I might just wake up and be, like, back in elementary school or something. Like, <laughs> how, did, how did this happen? Almost like it's not deserved, but then, like, you got to look back and think, you, we worked for it and we worked hard. So, yeah, it's just, 
it's just like a embodiment of that. I Did feel you like. catch yourself during those moments of like, yeah, I'm on top of the world and, and so forth and so on. But then when you go to bed at night, it's just you and your thoughts. And that's when you're re your real self and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think also, you know, this week we did like a week long thing with our hometown uh, in Antioch and like Brentwood in 925. Um, and I think one of the big parts of it is like staying away from there for so long. You just kind of start to lose yourself because you're around all these people who don't really know you. You know what I mean? When you go home, those people know you. Doesn't matter who you've become in the last two, three years. It's like, nah, I've known you since you were like six years old. I know the real you. I know the you that you can't turn off. You know what I mean? And so being away from that for so long, we kind of lost it a little bit. And so we had to come home. And I think that that's a big part of why we did this event this week and why we're trying to get back to those roots so that we can stay grounded and understand, okay, like we're not just a song. You know, we're a process. Like we're a story, you know, that's much longer than one page and it's going to keep going you know what i mean which is awesome because on the album there aren't features of big names you know household names or anything yeah, like that yeah, yeah. it's it's your pals yeah exactly you know i just talked sam truth and and red veil and and so forth and, and you know so many great songs on there man you did Thank such you. an outstanding job Thank and the production is very very consistent with you know after your expectations and yeah. past albums it's not like all of a sudden like what what the heck am i listening yeah. to yeah. um Bodega Bandit really stuck out to me. <laughs> Can you talk about the origins on that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so I'm not from New York, but my, my dad my dad's from New York. So it was kind of like that part of the Bodega thing was like a tribute to him. But, dude, I remember we went to New York one time, and our, our homie was like on the mic. And I was like, oh, they be calling Jahan the Bodega Bandit. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, why would you say that? <laughs> Nobody calls me that. Nobody calls me that. It's just like we we had gone to New York and we had like an amazing time, and that's why I feel like the the inspiration came from. Yeah. Wait. So they just nicknamed you that for no reason? No, you no. weren't wearing something weird, and you look like a bandit or no. like a patch on your eye? And <laughs> no. It was the homie. The homie just said it out of nowhere, and it was cr it was crazy. I don't know why he said it. <laughs> I I took him to the side after, and I was like, why are you lying to everybody? <laughs> but yeah. Well, now that you told the story, I'm going to keep calling you the Bodega Band. Never mind, baby boy. <laughs> the <Bodega> Band. <laughs> yeah, BB. <laughs> you guys are on the, 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 the release here, and congratulations on it. Thank you, thank you. The major label release. Yeah. It's a big yeah. deal. First one. Yeah. As you were putting these songs together, is there a, a through line in terms of subject matter? I, I guess it kind of just happens. You know, like, um, we do kind of try to put together projects that have songs that complement each other very well. But as far as subject matter goes, uh, the whole basis for this project is like personas, you know what I mean? Because with imposter syndrome, there's this idea that, you know, like we, we also kind of just struggled with this idea of, okay, like these people that we're supposed to be, or these people that we feel like we're supposed to be, why do we feel like we're supposed to, live up to these certain standards like who decides that you know what i mean and at the end of that thought process there's this realization that no one decides it and it does not matter so every single day i can reinvent myself every single day i can be someone different so it's like when you go down the album there's all these different personas and there's all these different ways of being and i think that's kind of what ties everything together is like you know, every day I can be someone different and there's no pressure, you know, mm. like it doesn't really matter. And I don't have to stress off of trying to be this specific person, this this rapper, you know, uh, archetype or whatever that people think that I should be. You know, I can just be myself, whatever that means. And it can mean something every day, but it's all just a small piece of who I really am altogether. You know? Was that perspective something you picked up during the last two years of isolation and, yeah. you know, being grounded and not being able to tour and see people and things? For sure. It's like... You know, when we're in L.A., we're we're someone. And then when we go home, we're someone else. And so it's like, you know, to sustain my lifestyle, do I have to be that person from L.A.? Is there no being that person from home anymore? Like, does that person just not exist, you know? It's like trying to figure out that balance. And so, yeah, at the end of it, we realize that, you know, there can be a balance because you can be anybody. That's not who you are. That's just... You know, a segment. It's a small piece. So basically, the bottom line is is that you're going to be dating models, supermodels, 
from this point forward, but you're still going to be those kids from up, <laughs> up Highway 4. Yeah, I mean, hey, it summed it up pretty well to me. I mean, Bodega Bandits uh, laughing like he has something to share right now. I'm going to check your IG to see who you're following. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats on the album, guys. Thank you. It is so good. I'm so stoked for you. I'm so envious of your supermodels that, you're, that you've got waiting for you backstage, so. Oh, uh, boy. Thanks, thanks for your time. Yeah, what are they doing? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Really <laughs> Thank appreciate Thank you so it, much, man. man. It's really the uh, guys it. of AG Club right here on B-Sides. Yeah.